In this video, I want to have a look at congruent triangles. So more generally first, two figures are congruent if they're exactly the same size and shape. So the symbol that we use for congruence is this here. So it's like an equal sign, but with three lines instead of two. And that's because congruent shapes are pretty much equal to each other. So if we have two congruent figures, then that means that the corresponding or the matching angles are equal in size, the corresponding sides are the same length, and the two figures have the same area. So if we want to look more specifically at triangles, we want to know what pieces of information we need to know to be able to prove that two triangles are congruent. And there's actually four tests that we can use. So one of the four tests is called the SSS test, and that stands for side, side, side. So what that means is that we need to be able to prove that all three pairs of corresponding sides are equal. So when we look at two triangles, we need to be able to match up the corresponding sides and then show that they are equal to each other. Our second test is called the SAS test, and that stands for side, angle, side. So in that test, we need two pairs of corresponding sides equal, and we need the included angle equal as well. Now, the important thing about that is included angle. That should just be angle, not angles as well. Um, so what that means is that we've got two sides equal. So here we've got this side and, um, and this side here. So they're equal. This one's equal to this one. And the included angle is the angle that's between those two sides. So it has to be this angle that's equal to this angle. So if we had, for example, this side's equal to this side, this one's equal to this one, and this angle is equal to this angle, that doesn't prove that they're congruent. It only works if it's that included angle. Our third test is called the AAS test. So that's angle, angle, side, which means that we have two pairs of corresponding angles equal and one pair of corresponding sides equal. So here we've got two equal angles. So this one matches this one, this one's corresponding to this one. And then we've got one matching side equal as well. So this side here, which is opposite this angle, is the same length as this side here, which is opposite the same corresponding angle. And our last test is what's called the RHS test. So that's right angle hypotenuse side. So that means that both our triangles have to be right angled. We know that their hypotenuses are equal and also that one other corresponding side is equal. So there are four tests. Let's have a look at how we write our proofs. So every time we write a proof to tell us that two triangles are congruent, your proof is gonna be set out like this. So there's gonna be five lines. Our first line is gonna say in triangle, and we're gonna list the three letters that make up that triangle. So in triangle, whatever, and triangle, whatever, we're gonna have three things that are equal. So that might be a side is equal to a side or an angle is equal to an angle. And we also have to put the reason that we know that that's true. And then the last thing is going to be our conclusion. So therefore, triangle is congruent to triangle whatever and our congruence test used. So that would be one of the four tests that we just named. So let's have a look at what those look like in an example. Our first example asks us to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. So that's this tri triangle is congruent to the bottom triangle here. So often when you're writing a proof, there's not one answer. A lot of the time there's multiple different ways that you could write a proof and they're all as valid as each other. But if we have a look at it, the first thing that's a good idea to do is draw on this diagram if you've got it um, and try and match things up and then we can see what sort of test we're going for. So the first thing I notice here is that this side here is equal to this side here. So we've got one side that's equal in length. Then we're looking for other things. So there's no other sides that are equal, but if we have a look at our angles, we know that this angle here has to be equal to this angle here because they're vertically opposite. And the last thing that I notice is that these two lines here are parallel, which means if we've got two parallel lines and a transversal, then we're going to have alternate angles in there. So this angle here, is equal to this angle here because they're alternate angles in parallel lines. We could have picked the other ones. We could have said this angle is equal to this angle here and that would be perfectly fine as well. But now we've got three pieces of information so we can start writing up our proof. So we're gonna start off with in triangle ABC and triangle EDC. 
And then we need our three reasons. So the first one I did was DC is equal to BC, or other way around, BC is equal to DC. And that's just given to us because it already had those lines marked on there. Our reason is just given. The next one I did was this angle is equal to this angle. So we'll write angle ACB is equal to angle matching that up would be ECD. And the reason was that they were vertically opposite. And the last one we had here was that this angle was equal to this one. We have angle BAC is equal to angle um, DEC. And they were alternate angles, and we knew that they were going to be equal because AB was parallel to DE. So we've got our introduction, we've got our three statements. Now looking at that, we've got a side, an angle, and an angle. So that's going to be the AAS test. So then we can write, therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. And we use the AAS test. So that's our proof that those two triangles are congruent. Our second example asks us to prove that triangle ABD, so this triangle on the right-hand side, is congruent to triangle ACD, so the triangle on the right hand, left hand side. It also tells us that triangle ABC, so the big triangle, is isosceles. So I can really clearly see two different proofs using two different tests that we can do for this, um, for this proof, and they're both equally valid. They both prove the same thing. I'm just going to run through one and then quickly talk you through the other. So the first thing I notice is that that's a right angle there. So this has to be a right angle here as well because that's a straight line along the bottom. Triangle ABC being isosceles means that this side is going to be equal to this side. And it also means that base angles are equal. So it means that this angle here is going to be equal to this angle here. So again, we've got an angle, another angle, and a side equal. So this one, we could do the AAS test again. The other way we can do it though, if we get rid of all of that, is that we do have our right angles still. Then we still have these sides being equal because it's isosceles. But we also have this side AD that runs down there and it's part of both of those triangles. So we can draw like a little S here and that's what's called a common side. So in this one, we have a right angle. We have the hypotenuse of those triangles being equal and we have one of the other sides being equal as well. So we could use the RHS test. So if we did it this way, let's write up the proof for that. So start with our introduction. So in triangle ABD and triangle ACD, then we need our three reasons. So the first one, let's do those angles down the bottom. So angle ADB is equal to angle a, D, C, and that's just given, right angles, oops, that's not how you spell right. Then I had these two sides here, so I had A, B is equal to um, A, C, and that was isosceles triangle. And the last one was this side here. So we would write AD is common. So that's our three reasons. Then we're going to have our conclusion. So therefore, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD. And our reason was our right angle. We should actually, sorry, we should put an equals 90 degrees in there as well. It's because we need it to be a right angle, the hypotenuse, and a side. So that would be R. HS test. Alright, so those are two examples of writing proofs for congruent triangles.